Welcome to Tumley Bay. You might think, Tumley Bay, I don't see the coast. Well, trust me, it is over there, but it is absolutely blowing you know what at the moment. Huge northerly, um, nice and sheltered right at this moment, but not forever. Um, I think it's like 45, nearly 50 kilometer hour winds gusting. You'll be able to see it coming down the road right behind me. Um, and the weather's about to change. Anyway, so we elected to drop the trailer here at this fantastic um, RV park at Tumley Bay. Um, there's water behind me, dump station behind me, and if everybody just reverses in against the fence line, everybody will be happy. So, not bad, not bad. So, um, yeah, we dumped the trailer here, went into Tumley Bay, and Judy will put a little um, collage, or whatever you talk it, talk it, call it, of uh, some beautiful um, murals around Tumley Bay and um, maybe a few photos of Tumley Bay themselves. So we went for a quick uh, walk around, saw what Tumley Bay had to offer there, um, stopped, topped up with some stuff at the, uh, the supermarket, definitely gonna pop down to the pie shop. There's an awesome looking pie shop in Tumley Bay. And uh, maybe tomorrow in the morning when we do the pie shop, we'll get a, a bit of a calmer bay itself because it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's even gorgeous and amongst all that wind and, and roughness but uh, we'll hopefully fingers crossed for tomorrow. So I'll leave you here at Tumley Bay. Look at that, the clouds are packing in, so they are talking about some rain late this afternoon as well. So, yep, spot you down the track. Here's Tumley Bay. morning well it's a reasonable morning it was quite a windy day yesterday of course we didn't get out much got a bit of rain last night but uh, still a bit of a dodgy day today but um, yeah it's nice to get out a bit of sunshine don't know how long I got it for but we'll uh, get out while the sun shines eh so I'm down here in Tumney Bay um, silo yep another silo to tick I think this is my second silo on the Air Peninsula Well, our next destination, we have made it to Port Lincoln. It's at the bottom for us of the Air Peninsula. And yeah, sadly we arrived yesterday and the weather was yucky. So uh, we've got a good little park up, it's pretty cheap with some power and that's about it. So it'll do us for two or three days where we'll do some computer work and some cleaning and then we'll make our way to Coffin Bay. So I'm at a lookout point, I'm hiding uh, underneath this uh, this building here, which is a observation tower, I guess it, water, uh, weather, and that sort of stuff, and, and keeps an eye on the water out there with some ships and things. But it's a great little spot up here. I believe, um, okay, so Port Lincoln's down below us here. Um, it's windy around the corner, so I didn't really want to stay in the wind. But there you go, there's your, your Port Lincoln down there. We've got the, uh, the Brennan Jetty, that's the major structure going out there and of course you've got your town jetty down in the down in the town center area there and i believe it's um boston island out over here and uh, this is the boston bay 
So uh, it's a beautiful spot. Um, I think Thistle Island was further over that way there. Um, sadly, we can't go down into the, the National Parks area, but I think that's where the, uh, the sun is shining on the dunes over there. You can see them. Um, I can't go there because I've got the animals. So uh, we can't take the animals with us. We've got no uh, way of uh, leaving them be. Okay, so now I'm gonna go around the corner here and it's gonna be a bit windier. I'll try and protect the mic as much as I can. So going back up this way is Tumney Bay where we were last couple of days. It's really nice. So uh, let's back up the Air Peninsula. And of course, I think if you got Boston Island out there, if we were to cut straight across, I think it said it was 135 miles back there straight across to Adelaide, believe it or not. So uh, this is, yeah, this is um, Port Lincoln, which has a population of around about oh, over 15,000 people. So uh, not a bad uh, little uh, settlement down here in the bottom. Obviously uh, it's fishing related, um, but a, a lot of farming, as you can see from the pastures around the place. And uh, fittingly enough, this hill is called Winter Hill. And I say fittingly, fittingly enough because it is winter. It's the other side of winter. And uh, yeah, it feels like it. it's a bit cool, nippy, got plenty out. So uh, we'll head to our next port of call. It's not another port, we are in Port Lincoln. Well, you'll be excused by scratching your head going, I think I know what that structure is. Yes, it's called the old mill. And it was anticipated to be a windmill to crush the grain for flour here in Port Lincoln. So it's actually the oldest standing structure in Port Lincoln. It was uh, started around about um, 1846. But it only got to that stage, it was, I think the population back then was around about 96 people and they were hand crushing um, for flour at that time and they figured that um, if they were to build a structure like this to make it easier to crush the grain that uh, more people will come here and uh, populate the town but uh, sadly for some reason it didn't happen so that's as far as they got a windmill with no wind <laughs> but uh, a pretty amazing little structure that was handed back over to the city and they scratched their head going like, what are we going to do with it now and they figured well, well let's flat top it and put a ladder around the outside and there you have it the old mill And here's the view at the top of the mill, the old mill. I wish it was a nicer day, but uh, as I say, it was raining yesterday, today, cloudy, just my luck would be absolutely beautiful tomorrow and we're pretty much thinking about moving on. But uh, nice little spot at the top of the old mill at uh, Port Lincoln.
All right, let's do our next spot. Where could it be? That was on my radar, the Tacoma. It's a good old wooden tuna boat that was um, first thought about in around about the mid 1940s. And they finally found some timbers that were going to go nicely with this boat and they started building it. Put it on the water about 1951 and it went to work uh, here in the, in the Port Lincoln area, um, pole fishing for tuna. So it worked from 1956 to around about 1968. Um, then it was um, thrown in as a prawn trawler. Um, in recent times here, it's a bit of a tourist attraction and you can book tours, I believe, to go out onto it. But anyway, something else around about Port Lincoln. It is known as one of the largest commercial fishing fleets in the Southern Hemisphere. And this is only just a splattering. There's uh, two or three odd marinas like this. And you can see all these boats are obviously for um, all the commercial fish like uh, tuna, rock lobsters, mussels, oysters, kingfish. And uh, there's also tour boats around here as well that does um, uh, seal tours and um, shark tours, shark cage diving. How scary is that? I've seen some photos of it, look it up. Um, pop you out in a cage and then throw these bunches of fish down in, in front of you and watch these sharks come around. But there it is. The reason I came here was the Tacoma. Catch you next one. down the uh, main street here of uh, Port Lincoln and I bumped into this beautiful statue, bronze statue here of Matthew Flinders. Now he was responsible for charting a lot of the southern coast here in Australia and I think in 1802 he called into the harbour here Port Lincoln or well, he named Port Lincoln after his hometown of Lincolnshire um, in England. He's also got a little pet with him too. This here apparently uh, his name was uh, Trim and it's meant to be good no good luck if you rub his nose so uh, a lot of ticket was uh, yesterday maybe the next one <laughs> right let's go and see what other little uh, landmark we can find here in uh, Fort Lincoln This has got to be one of the most amazing bronze statues I've seen. It's a um, tuna pole fisherman. Now these guys would uh, obviously stand precariously locked into the side of a boat or something here. They'd have a pole with a bit of a wire on it and then they have these little uh, teasers for some feathers that look like squids and they would bash them in the water. Obviously these, uh, these tuna would be um, like, we call them like bait balls. They'd be uh, feeding up big time on these uh, baits. So they'd slap them on the water, tuna would grab them, and the guy with that pole would wrench the tuna into the boat. Absolutely amazing show of strength. I mean, these tuna, I mean, that was probably 30 odd kilo odd tuna there. They they can reach speeds. So I think they're the first, fastest fish in the sea of uh, 70 kilometers per hour. So they're a lot of uh, muscle, a lot of speed, and they're uh, putting it up against uh, these anglers. And uh, it's known, I read uh, an angler can pull in something like 10 ton a tuna in a, uh, in a fish out. That's a lot of work out there in the ocean and trying to compete with rocky seas. But yeah, 
you know, tribute to the tuna fishermen, the pole finish fishermen. Awesome. Right, and one of the last points of interest here in uh, Port Lincoln, and trust me, I'm keen to get inside because it's getting cold. This beauty, Maccabi Diva. Now this horse was uh, British born, I believe, but of course it was trained to win here in Australia. This horse was the first horse, I believe, that won three Melbourne Cups um, between 2003 and 2005. So quite a grand effort for an amazing horse. Also, I think its total winnings was around about uh, $14 million. So uh, owned by one of the uh, local tuna fishermen around here or something. The Kaivi Diva. Right, time to go and get some taka. What do you know? I told you when we're up on that hill, trust me, the day we're gonna leave, you're gonna have a beautiful day. And it is not a cloud in the sky. Incredible. Just thought uh, I will give this little uh, plug for us leaving um, Port Lincoln and uh, show you where we were staying. Um, it's a great little spot. It's probably, it wouldn't have been my first choice, but I'm really pleased that we did stay here. Um, you are limited for the amount of power sites. I can't even tell you how many power sites there were. I can only see the one. But there's um, heaps of uh, free camping sites as well, and it's very low cost. Um, John Martin Caravan Repairs. There we go. Told you, wouldn't be the sort of place you expect to park up, but uh, trust me, there's plenty of caravans parked up. <laughs> so it's a beautiful, nice, quiet suburb up on the hill um, of Port Lincoln. And as I say, a lot of these caravans are in storage. Down the uh, far left-hand side there, there's a bunch of um, free parks, and we've nabbed uh, a little powered site on the end here. Real cheap, real reasonable, but just super quiet, easy to get into town. Um, there's a dump site and water, because um, you don't get water here, but we do get power. Um, not far, you can drive for a dump site and water. So, yep, just leaving you on that note as we head over towards Coffin Bay. Looking forward to trying the famous Coffin Bay oysters. I've been saving for these ones. Anyway, bag and tow, we're on our way. Alright, just travelled down the road from... Where was I? Can't remember. What is the biggest fleet of commercial vehicles? <laughs> Dude, Matthew Flinders. So he um, basically in 1774 and 1814... Uh, no. 